O nga kāhui maungo te motu kua tai mai i tēnei pō, nei rātou mihi ki a koutoura. Uh, Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, ko tēnei te mihi ki a kōrua ki a koutoura, i, I rungi i tino kaupapa i te pō nei. Uh, nō reira, ki aura nō tātou. Um, I love International Women's Day. I'm probably one of the people who has it come up as a flashpoint on their diary and think this is cool because all around the world there are women like us and people, men like Simon, who are standing up and celebrating all that is good and great about a woman. So we know and we've heard that International uh, Women's Day is all about uh, a, a global celebration of social, political, economic uh, and uh, cultural um, achievement. And what it's also neat about the International uh, Day of Women is that no one owns it. It belongs to everyone. So no government leads it. No business, no private sector, no church, no faith, no network. It is neutral. It is a movement. And because you are all here this evening, I know that you've signed up to this year's challenge, which is Be Bold for Change. I know that you have made time in your diaries and you have prioritised this evening because you recognise that things need to change. Because you recognise that in your workplace or in your home or in your community or in your culture, things need to change. And so if we think about the sub-theme here uh, for the International uh, Day of Women is all about how do we create, how do we build, how do we help forge a better working world? How do we create a more inclusive gender-neutral world. How do we, you and me, sign up to that challenge for the next 12 months? And what are we going to do in terms of our area of influence when we leave this building here this evening? I did some very um, in-depth uh, research in preparation for this evening. I asked my four-year-old Mokapuna uh, what she thought being bold was. And she said to me, Tracy, it's easy. Being bold is about being as brave as a lion. And she ran off into the garden growling and being a lion. <laughs> I love it. I asked my eight-year-old niece uh, what she thought being bold for change was, and she smiled at me knowingly, and she said, being bold is about being brave like my dad. When I talk to my 16-year-old friend, we catch up, we've got a mentoring arrangement um, with school, uh, and I said to her, Kari, what do you think uh, being bold for change means? She said to me, as she looked up momentarily from her phone, <laughs> it's doing you best. Then uh, when I was at rugby practice the other night with my 21-year-old niece, I asked her, Grace, what do you think? Um, be bold for change means. And she said, simple trace. She said, it's about doing the right thing at the right time, all of the time. And it got me thinking about what being bold for change meant for me uh, in the roles that I carry and the, with the responsibilities that I have. And I started to think about all of those women that I hold with great respect the women who are at the front line all of the day, all of the time. Women like our Deputy Prime Minister, like our Governor General, who are at the front line of decision making at tables where discussions are occurring and are making the calls and they are being required, they are required to be bold for change. When I look around the room this evening, I can see each and every one of you have bought into that aspiration that we have the ability to change the world as we know it here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, because other people are doing it. And what I also started to think about was where have there been touch points in my life where I've been required to be bold for change? Every year, September 19 is another big day in my diary. It comes up in flashes. It's suffrage day. And every year I celebrate, like you all in this room, uh, the great work and the leadership of Kate uh, and the suffragettes. And for me as a Māori woman, I think about Mere Te Tai Mangakahia, who stood alongside her suffragette sisters and who walked arm in arm to be bold for change. And I think about Mere 
because she was also the first Māori woman who presented and petitioned Te Kotahitanga, which is, was in the Māori Parliament at the time. And she went in and she asked the Māori Parliament to endorse the suffrage movement. She asked them to endorse the vote for women. And she asked them more than that. Of course she did. Why not? <laughs> what Mary asked for was she asked for the Māori Parliament to make space to make seats available for Māori women in the Māori Parliament. Now, I think that's huge. And if my moko was here, she would say that Mere was brave like a lion. Mere was bold for change. I think about the Federation of Māori Authorities. I'm the first uh, female chairman in 30 years. I tell you what, ladies, oh, that was being bold for change. <laughs> What that meant too was I cast my mind back when I was asked to take up the seat uh, 30 years earlier where Sir Hepi Tehuhu and the Honourable Waka Virko took the inaugural manifesto for FOMA and presented it to a group of women, hui huinga hui wahine. And this group of women were asked to consider, to review and endorse the establishment of a national body of Māori and iwi organisations that were charged with the responsibility for fostering and enhancing the economic welfare and well-being of Māori. And in that single decision, when those bunch, that bunch of brave and very proud and very committed and compassionate Māori women made that decision, they effectively, 30 years into the future, uh, laid the platform for the burgeoning Māori economy as we know it today. I started to think too, finally, about what being bold for change meant for me. And I recalled a moment when I was with um, my nannies, as I typically was uh, when I was growing. And uh, I was at a porphyry with them, standard fare for the Hopapa whānau. And they said to me, Tracy, didn't you say to me once that you wanted to learn to karanga? And I said, yes, aunt, I did, thinking, oh my God. And she said to me, listen to me, and she gave me a karanga. And then she gave me once, twice, three times, and then the karanga from Tangata Whenua came across the marae atea, and I felt in the small of my back a small and very warm and very firm hand pushing me forward. <laughs> and as I went forward, in shock, my mouth opened, and a karanga, her karanga, came forward. And I knew then that she had me. I knew then that didn't matter what happened, she was there to back me up. And I knew then, I learnt then, the universal uh, and fundamental uh, lesson that we all know, where we have at a time been pushed forward because we were not bold for change. And someone else was. And so we became bold. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening I'm asking you to be bold for change. This evening I'm asking you for the next 12 months to sign up to that global aspiration where we, uh, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our families, in our communities, make change. Because we need to do that. Ngā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Kia ora.